So as we enter our final hour of talks, um, it's time for our um, fellowship of the day. This is the final one we're doing. So as you know, this is the highest honor of the Radio Academy and that can be bestowed on a member of our industry. So to present this fellowship, the last one of the day, can you please welcome Chair of Clinks and founder of the Prison Radio Association, Roma Harper. to be here. I actually can't see everybody, but I hope there's enough to appreciate what we're doing. Yes. Um, I was invited to come and talk. I didn't actually realise that I was going to be speaking. I wrote this, what I'm going to say, but actually I actually didn't realise it was going to be me talking to it. I'm going to add a few extra bits and I'll try and be quick. Um, this person worked in social work and education before getting involved in radio. He got a master's in broadcast journalism and started his career as a radio producer at the BBC. In 2005, he saw an advert when he was working on the Jeremy Vine show, inviting applications for secondment uh, to support the newly formed Prison Radio Association, who are expanding their unique work and their impact. Radio Feltham at Feltham, Radio Feltham, at Feltham Young Offenders had already been launched sometime before in 1994 in response to a very troubling increase in suicides amongst the people, children and young people in prison in Feltham. So this person decided to apply for this very out-of-the-box opportunity and went to meet the team. His genuine enthusiasm, passion for radio, and great experience got him the job. Thanks to the very positive relationship that Radio Feldham had developed with the BBC and its corporate and social responsibility department, this secondment was actually initially funded by then. Such an unusual approach to prisoner rehabilitation was always going to be risky, and he took on the challenge without hesitation. Before he became the founding chief exec in 2006, I met him outside Lancaster Prison in the snow with my husband who had two dogs in the car. We went in there, he came out and said, I don't want to go back to the BBC, I want a job with you. And I thought, oh shit, I haven't got any money. So that was the beginning of a journey, but we have been so lucky, thanks to the government at Brixton Prison and the ability to broadcast via satellite, which I had learnt from Bruno Brooks actually visiting what he was doing. The Prison Radio Association was able to establish an electric radio in 2007, which then provided the platform for them to launch the world's first national prison radio station for people in prison in 2009. Now, the key to the uniqueness of prison radio was and is today that the prisoners themselves are the backbone of the programming and the broadcasting. So, supported by the Board of Trustees and the success in raising funds, he has built an extraordinarily talented team of presenters and producers. The PRA has two stations, one in Brixton and the other in Style, a women's prison, and they are responsible for creating the content and critically making it relevant to the prisoners. The charity has now become the cornerstone of support for nearly every prisoner in the country, broadcasting via prisoners' TV sets. It also means that those with literary issues have an alternative way to receive information. Prisoners are often the last people to ever know what is going on in their prison and where they can get support. The National Prison Radio Station is an invaluable service to the voluntary sector and prisons to have immediate access to prisoners. This was never more important than in COVID. Thanks to him and his team, Prison Radio continues to save lives, exactly the aim when Radio Fulton was set up. He is warm and generous, very talented producer, great networker, and his ambition to make sure the world knows the benefit of prison radio has led him to set up Prison Radio International. I had to hold him back a bit on that one because I needed him to do a bit more work here. Um, these phenomenal achievements deserve huge credit, and he is an utter joy to work with. He is an inspiration to all those he works with, including all of our prisoners. It is my great pleasure to present a Radio Academy Fellowship to Phil Maguire. Blimey. Um, blimey. 
Um, I'm humbled and I'm overwhelmed, and I'm both of those things because anybody that knows me will know one, at least this one thing about me, and it's that I love radio. I really love radio. So this is a huge honour. Um, I've always loved radio, and it's given me so much. It's given me a wonderful career. Uh, it's given me an opportunity to be creative, a place to be thoughtful and kind. It's given me a platform to support other people. It's given me a network of some of the best friends anyone could wish to have. And it's even given me a family. Um, I met my wife, the beautiful Nikki Davidson, when we were both radio producers at BBC Radio 2 in 2003. And since then, together, we have produced a family. So that is evidence that radio is great at building connections, and those connections can really change lives. Um, as Roma mentioned, in 2005, I managed a partnership between the BBC and the prison service um, to develop the idea of prison radio, which Roma had started many years earlier. And in 2006, I left the BBC to become the first employee of this brand new little charity, the Prison Radio Association. And in 2009, when I took to the stage to collect our very first Sony Gold Award, I said uh, that we do this because we believe in radio and in the power it has to change people's lives. And we still believe that today more than we ever did before. Uh, we set up National R Prison Radio based on that belief, on the belief that radio has the power to offer support where it's needed most. And we started with a small idea and lots of hope. And we built something really special. We, we wanted to give people in prison a voice. We wanted to provide an opportunity for them to uh, get some respect and take some responsibility, uh, a place where they could uh, think and learn and grow as people. And National Prison Radio has uh, surpassed all of our expectations. It's now a lifeline for so many, many thousands of people. And the work that we do has spilled out beyond the prison gates, beyond the bars. We now run an incredible talent development program for people who work to the inside after they're released from prison. We create amazing podcasts, including the Life After Prison podcast and The Secret Life of Prisons, which I am honored and I take great joy in co-hosting. Um, as an independent production company, we have made dozens of radio programs for the BBC, which is a really important part of what we do. And uh, through leading the development of Prison Radio International, which is now a community of 56 prison radio projects across 24 countries, we are showing the world that radio really does have the power to change lives. Um, along the way, I've worked with some really remarkable and incredible people, and I should start by thanking uh, Phil Jones. Uh, Phil Jones was the legendary and formidable uh, editor of the Jeremy Vine Show at Radio 2, and he's one of my closest friends and gave me my first break in radio. Um, Kieran Tilley and Roma Hooper, um, without them, they were the visionaries behind the Prison Radio Association. Without them, none of you would have heard of the Prison Radio Association or National Prison Radio. And of course, Roma was, for more than 15 years, the best boss, mentor, confidant, friend, and support that anyone could ask for. Um, and I have to mention uh, the wonderful Andrew Wilkie, my partner in crime for 18 years. Andrew is the Prison Radio Association's Deputy Chief Executive, and he is, uh, without doubt, uh, the nicest and the hardest working man in radio and the best colleague and friend anyone could ask for. Um, we couldn't have done any of this without the support of all of our partners and supporters and stakeholders, including the Prison Service and the BBC and many others. Um, but it's my colleagues, my Prison Radio colleagues, producers, staff, people that happen to have lived in prison at one point or other in their lives. We, I can't list them all, there are too many of them, but I don't think they know how much I love and admire and respect all of them. Um, prison Radio really has given me a great life and a great career. It's given me a community. It's given me a place where I feel like I belong, where I feel like I'm at home. And I think we all know that radio has the power to inform, entertain, and educate, but it also can heal and transform. And that's why I think we all do this and why we're going to carry on doing this. Um, I'd like to thank the whole radio industry 
particularly the Radio Academy, which I love so much. But most of all, I'd just like to thank radio. Thank you.